Well, good evening, folks. Um, I'm now currently um, set up uh, for roe deer. I'm out in quite an open, sort of grassy area at the minute. Um, I've got the cam net, as you can see. It's pretty much all the way around the landy, um, although it's blowing quite cheekily, uh, a northerly wind right through the window with the lens poking out. So I've got a bit of uh, bit of cam on, in case I have to go out and go mobile on the ground a little bit really, and there's a little hedge line going up the middle here, so I may have to sort of creep along there. So at the moment the wind's in, my, in, in the face of the lens barrel, so no scent driving that way, got the cam net on, I'm hidden behind a hedge with the top of the landy peeking up, but it's pretty well camouflaged. Um, hoping to um, to pick up some roe deer, which have, have been quite um, quite seen quite uh, quite early, really, um, because this area is relatively undisturbed. So um, I'm hoping to uh, to pick up some shots of uh, some nice roe deer. There's a fair few uh, roe bucks here. I say fair few, but we don't get many that many in Cornwall. But we've got about four here, and there's uh, at least two does. So uh, we shall hope. Uh, for some success maybe a bit later on so I've uh, just set up and uh, I've got the 600 on a, on the 1DX and I've opted for the um, beanbag support rather than the ergo rest and gimbal head um, it's quite windy it's coming right in and you know with the stability of the beanbag with my hand on the lens put my prime down with pressure there just gives that a little bit more stability and stops the lens barrel moving around um, at the moment I'm shooting at uh, 16 hundredths of a second at ISO 800 uh, at 4 so um, that's pretty good I mean I really want minimum of a, a thousandth of a second with a 600 on especially with the wind moving around uh, and on the bean bag you can you can get a little bit more um, more support there and less vibration um, shooting in manual again with auto ISO, um, always quite a good safe safe option really, um, in case you get carried away in the moment, light changes and then you get caught out, But and I have put a limitation as I said I usually do, um, of uh, 6400 um, on the ISO, I, it can go higher but I kind of like to put that on and if I want to shoot and the ISO needs to go above that it will do um, flip to uh, AV mode so therefore I can still get a uh, and it correct exposure shot so uh but uh yeah at the minute lights coming round it's quite nice side lit so anything potentially coming into the into my field of view um should have a nice bit of light on the back to pick out some detail and then reduce the ISO a bit so the the, the, the detail on the uh on the deer or subject will be um pretty pin sharp as you can hear the wind is blowing around I thought it was going to ease off, but it seems to be gusting quite a bit. But uh, just have to bear with it and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so I've been uh, quite lucky um, already. Um, a roe deer's been out and uh, been in some long grass. As you can see by here, there's uh, there's the roe deer there. If I just take the info off Instagram, there you can see. Um, it's a nice couple um, shots there of a deer in motion. Uh, we can go in a little bit. Um, just try to show you there. So as you can see, there's a nice, um, a nice male roebuck in amongst the grass. Um, and the light was pretty good actually. So at the moment, if I zoom back out, uh, you can see there the histogram. Um, it's in all five boxes, which is always a bit of a good one. Um, but. Uh, shots in the bag. Let's hope uh, get a few closer ones and uh, maybe a few more deer in the picture. So we're currently going through a little bit of a quiet patch. Uh, the light's in and out so um, I just thought I'd just talk a little bit about um, about roe deer. It's our uh, smallest native uh, deer in the UK. There are seven species. Uh, many have been introduced. Um, Chinese water deer, monk jack, um, fallow etc. Um, but they generally um, weigh roughly between sort of 10 and 35 kilograms, 35 kilograms being generally the adults. Um, the males are called bucks and the females are called does. Um, 
they have an amazing adaptation um, for females in their um, in the breeding season, the rutting season. So um, July and August, um, they obviously get impregnated, uh, and the egg isn't actually fertilised until January. It's called um, delayed implantation. Um, they obviously don't want to rear their young through the harsh winter, so they delay the um, the actual fertilised egg until January. It kicks in, and then they generally give birth. Uh, in May or June, um, with t um, two to maybe even three young. Um, yeah, what an amazing thing that is. Um, yeah, looking wise, uh, generally their coats are, are, are sort of obviously brown, but in the summer they go quite reddish and they go quite pale in the winter. Um, they got a little white um, patch on there on the rump. Um, the males have antlers, quite small, um, not like the red deer, um, and quite often with sort of three points on really. Um, such a cracking, cracking little deer, really, and quite, and quite, um, quite quiet, really, um, and very sort of skittish. Don't really come out. Quite shy, really. Um, but yeah, just a, a great little mammal species that we are now seeing a lot more of in Cornwall. Uh, originally, it was you know fleeting glimpses, but now we're seeing them a bit more often. I certainly wouldn't call them common. They're quite scarce, but uh, lovely to see, lovely to have, and lovely to photograph, really. The lights just literally changed, and it's um, it's coming with such a lovely orange glow um, through all the sort of brown, ready grass with the uh, the uh, thistle in the front. Um, just illuminated the deer lovely as he's looking round. It's slightly pixelated, um, but really you can get an overall effect of the shot. If I zoom back out, this is zoomed in at 100%. So, um, but when you've got the shot in this environment. Uh, it really does look quite nice. So I just wanted to go into uh, a bit about the, the sort of camo clothing, really. Um, there's a couple of schools of thought, really, about camo. Is it really necessary? Um, I think most of the time, if, if, if you're in sort of plain drab clothes and, and subjects can see you, especially mammal species, they have that sort of um, circle of fear thing, really, where they won't allow you to get within a certain distance. If you go too far in, they move away a little bit. Then you stop, they relax, continue. But if you keep pushing it, they'll just keep going that little bit further away. So sometimes with camo, it is a good idea because you're in the position. If the wildlife come out, they don't know you're there. Therefore, they act more normal, um, feed, do things they wouldn't ordinarily do if they're being watched. Um, but if you're in plain clothes, they know you're there. They're aware of you. They're not totally relaxed. Um, they're a little bit on edge. Um, and they're not behaving as you want them to behave in their natural environment. So really, yeah, you creep around in camo, you're stalking something, it sees you, it's wondering what you're doing, why are you stalking it? Um, they're a bit uneasy, uncertain. You know, I think it's a mixture of both really, and it depends on what, on what you're taking pictures of. But, you know, I do find that, yeah, you know, you're dressed up like a tree, and it's a bit stupid. But um, to be honest, you know, if you're in a position you're waiting for them to come out, you're cammed up, you're good to go, you've got your head covered, takes the silhouette off your head, takes the shine off your face. Um, it really does give you that distinct advantage. Um, but not all species are like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I've taken pictures of, you know, deer in, in, in plain sight in like blue top and bottom, you know, and, and other times they've just run off. So it, it's just one of those situations you just have to work out at the time. Um, but there's loads and loads of camo out there and um, loads of you know cheap stuff you can buy on on uh, Amazon, on eBay. You know it's kind of fairly you know, twenty quid for top and bottoms. It's, it's not bad at all really. Or uh, army surplus stores. Always good to pick up some um, some military kit. Um, and it's usually lasts a pretty long time. It's tried and tested. 